because today we are going to show you how to take this drab, not so cute bathroom and make it look expensive on a budget. Welcome to our little slice of paradise. The amount of projects in this beachy fixer upper is never ending, but we've managed to create some really magical rooms with laughs, <laughs>, ow, ow, ow. love, and DIY, and today is no exception. Oh, great. As we put the finishing touches on the last remaining room of the studio guest apartment, the bathroom. Clearly I didn't turn off the water all the way. As always, we are on a mission to make things look like a million bucks for only a few bucks. guest bathroom? This is the final little space in what is this whole guest suite that you guys have seen us pull together. Of course, Joey did the best guest bedroom that looks so good. I tried to hire him full time. He refused my offer. He's still making me work. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so we gotta talk about what we gotta do in here. There's so much to do in here to make it look expensive because it doesn't right now. <clears throat> Welcome to my office. <laughs> because let's be honest, this is where I do my best thinking. <laughs> For real though. Anyways, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about how to make this beautiful, okay? So when you analyze a bathroom, obviously it's a small space. So we don't wanna go too wild and crazy with our design choices. But it's like a weird setup. There's like a tiny little bath basin. The window's all kind of old and drab. And then we've got our vanity mirror. Hey, look! These countertops aren't terrible, but we're going to spruce up everything else because everything else is just sad looking. Obviously this corner is kind of our most like bare opportunity for maybe like a piece of furniture or an artwork moment or something like that. And that light, that light has so many dead bugs in it. Ew. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, so same thing we talked about in our kitchen makeover. We want these tips to be helpful for you if you own your place, but also if you rent your place. So you can swap out lighting fixtures and it's not like a permanent change. You can always just save the lighting fixture that you take down and when you're moving out, put that one back up. You may still want to double check with your landlord, but you know, changing lights can make a big difference. Typically, mirrors are attached to the wall with just a mastic, so it's just an adhesive. So you can usually just pry them off the wall, or you know, if you have just a flat mirror like this, it's not, they don't normally have like screws in it. And I'm also gonna obviously be somewhat careful so that I can take this mirror to the thrift store. Oh, great. Why am I always taking mirrors off of walls in this house? and finding crazy things. Remember I took the mirror off of that other bathroom? Ready to see what's behind this mirror? We weren't planning for that. Back in the day, people would shave with the straight razors and they would have a slot inside their medicine cabinet that they would just put the razor in and it would go into the wall cavity. See, tons of these down there. are the shower tiles. Those square tiles are very in. Plus there's some gradient to them. It's very sort of now current. I'm not that obsessed with like the black border because I feel like that dates the tile a little bit. But then number two, I also like the countertops. But I do think that it needs some freshening up. What would you call this current color? This color? Mm-hmm. Uh, beige. Beige? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong answer! <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like a toe fungus color to me. 
Okay, toe fungus color. I'll go with so that. So that's not what we're going for. It's also on the ceiling. These are the same color swatches, or three of the same colors we swatched in the kitchen. I, mean, I kind of like the middle one. I agree. I like this one too. I think this will be a nice transition from the bedroom into the kitchen. And we can accent with like some beachy elements in here, kind of complementing the bedroom design. Ooh. The variations in this square gray tile is actually a very current look. Also using a monochromatic same color palette wall color is just a super on trend choice. I think will elevate the space. It's almost like that, like Japandi style, which is basically- Japandi? Never heard of it. Japandi, yeah, it's like a new term. It's basically like the combination of Scandinavian and Wabi Sabi. Mm -hmm. So it's like- And what is Wabi Sabi? <laughs> Joey. No time to explain all these things. Really excited to update what is just this super plain plywood vanity that's been painted a million times. And we're gonna use this faux bois technique which makes it look like wood in such a fun, kind of beachy way. It's gonna look so different. Faux bois, it's really just a fancy French word. Well, it's just really a French word, but it makes it sound fancy for Faux wood, fake wood. We've got our base color. That was this kind of like tan color. And then I've got these two other colors that I'm gonna do one at a time though. I'm gonna start with this darker color actually first. I've got my little faux bois tools here. A key I think is thinning this top coat that we're gonna use to create the wood effect. You could either use like a glaze or this is this flow trawl. I've used this before with like acrylic pores. It basically just makes your paint a little bit more easy to manipulate. Fun little historical Mr. Kate tidbit. I did a faux bois DIY in the Mr. Kate book, Hot Clues Iron Mess, where I used a comb and a fork. So if you don't have these little tools and you don't want to buy them, you could just pick up a copy of a hot glue gun mess and uh, use your comb and your fork. To get the wood grain effect, you use your rubber faux bois tool to just rock back and forth, making sure that each stroke you do doesn't totally match the one next to it so it has that organic wood look. This is a broom, which I'm gonna use to drag through and just create that much more little line. That's looking like some faux wood, I'd say. I love it. A la la la. These faux bois tools are only a few dollars. You can get them online. They're so easy to use, and I love that it just updates anything. You can put them on anything, make anything look like wood. It's such a fun project. So we're replacing this old outdated incandescent light fixture with a nice flush mount LED fixture. And then Kate is also gonna do a DIY on the vanity light. Changing up lighting in here is gonna make a big difference. Light fixture DIY time. Okay, so we could just use this new fixture that we got with these nice globes, but I wanna take it a step further because I think the thing that makes something look expensive is having some of those kind of custom items that are a little bit more intricate. So because I have some of the flow trawl left over, I'm going to attempt, because <laughs> I've never done this before, an acrylic pour within these globes. If you guys wanna see a canvas version of this project, we did this with the Dolan twins in our OMG We're Coming Over series. It turned out so amazing. So the idea is use the flow trawl, you mix it with all of your colors. So I've got a little array of colors here. I'm actually using the wall color that Joey used in the studio apartment bedroom. So I think this is gonna be a fun way to bring in that color into the bathroom and I'm going to only do it on the inside of this and really hope that this turns out cute. So 
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my pouring cup. The way to do that is I'm gonna just pour bits of each color into one single cup. And the trick is you don't stir it because if you stir it, then you're gonna create like a muddy soup. But if we just pour it in, hopefully they'll start mm, kind of marbleizing together within the cup and then we'll get that effect that much more when we go to pour it in here. up on the wall and there are these open glass globes where the light from the light bulbs will still shine down through them and it's just gonna be wow such a statement in a cute subtle way uh, this is the weirdest funniest tub ever do you think this is supposed to be a bathtub? I feel like people used to be smaller in the 1960s. <laughs> a really easy way to give new life to your bathtubs, sinks, everything is to, is to refinish them. So we're not gonna refinish the tile because we like the color no, tile. The gray tile I love. To me, this, this little half round is a very dated look. I think that painting it out white, just slightly differentiating between the wall and the tile, which now so closely match, it'll look cool. Yeah, and what's cool is they sell these um, tub refinishing kits. It has like everything you need, Ooh, gloves, gloves. Steel, steel wool. wool brushes, and then this. So basically, we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. We're gonna Don't paint. Don't kill any birds. We're gonna paint two birds with one brush. Don't paint anything. <laughs> We're gonna refinish the shower, to... tub, pan, and also paint the black tile at the same time. Nice. I think this is a great tip, especially for people who don't have the budget to retile. Okay, so white trim, white tub. Good deal. When you're painting tile or a tub or a sink, the key is prep. So you wanna make sure everything is super clean. All right, because we're painting with an intense enamel, it's gonna be really fumey, so I'm gonna wear my respirator. Trying to save a few brain cells. All right guys, Saturday morning. Kate is at class with Moon, so I'm gonna um, replace that light. I'm going to finish the bathtub. I'm going to figure out what's going on on the vanity light situation and put the vanity back together. Another quick and easy fix you can make in your bathroom that will give a nice change is switching out your faucet. So we have this really basic chrome faucet, super shiny. We got this nice gooseneck faucet. The height just makes it look a little nicer. Super easy to uninstall your faucet, install your new one. The way your faucets work is they're just connected to your countertop with these little screws. Turn off your water, have a towel under the sink with you, and you're just gonna uninstall your old faucet by unscrewing the water supplies and install your new one. Clearly I didn't turn off the water all the way. Remember uh, how a couple minutes ago I talked about how uh, simple it was? The shutoff valve to the water just broke. So I can't turn the water off. So I gotta go replace that entire valve stem. So be ready for fun times, I guess is the moral of the story. Believe it or not, I like. You can see how tired this caulking is right here. 
And that's what makes this space look not so expensive. If you like your countertop, but you don't like that it's looking a little tired, this is one of my favorite tips. Refreshing the caulking around your sink or tub is a really easy way to refresh the look of it. You just want to remove the previous caulk with a razor blade and then use just a thin bead along the seams, smearing it in with your finger, letting it dry fully. It's a really great way to also help keep water from penetrating into those little spaces and causing mold and mildew. Ew. Making something look expensive, you've got to make it look clean. So we did this in our expensive looking kitchen makeover. If you guys haven't seen that video, go check it out. Um, so this is the same tip, but I'm going to do the sink and the toilet. This is actually a TikTok hack that I learned from Sneaker Talk because they use this 40 volume salon developer to clean the soles of the sneakers that are yellowing. You mix this with equal parts baking soda because it just gives you a little bit of a grit and more of a paste. And um, use a toothbrush to apply it. It's really amazing how cleaning something can make it look that much more expensive. Ew, like what is that? I don't even wanna know. Joey, you wanna do this job? <laughs> the little things to make your bathroom look more expensive, it's all in the details. I'm really excited about these two tips. So this first one, not that novel, but it does make a difference. I got two matching soap dispensers. My plan is to put shampoo and conditioner in these. I'm just gonna write like cute, like shampoo, or maybe I'll just do like an S and a C, maybe that's chicer. Okay, so Tip number two, basically you take a decanter and put mouthwash in the decanter. I think that's super chic. And then I also got these little cute, very inexpensive shot glasses. So like a little stack of those nearby. Bringing in more of like that beachy feeling in here since we've got like the surfboard in there, the rattan side table. Joey really set the tone in this guest suite in the bedroom. So I wanna take a cue from that and bring in a basket element into the bathroom. I thought it would be really cool to take a set of these square baskets and mount them on the wall as shelves. We're bringing in that beachy look and also creating a great space to store extra towels and toilet paper above the toilet. I don't know if I want this plant stand, but what I like about it, these can look a little bit cluttered. I kind of like the idea of then placing like a plant stand on the other side of it. So you don't walk in and see the side of like a messy cart. Adding plants to a bathroom is one of my favorite things. It's not always a go-to for people, but I do think it adds that element of airiness, that element of spa-like. You see plants, you just want to ah, take a deep breath. So yeah, add some plants. They can be small, small plants. Piece of Mr. K artwork above here. I think maybe the black and white like daisies and then a runner rug here and then I have actually a fun DIY I'm gonna do with this just to kind of like spruce up this towel bar so I'm you hang uh, I'm the boss okay thank you I can't find my tape measure, so quick and easy tip for you. When you're hanging your artwork, just take a piece of tape, do a little number like this. Mark it. Now you know where your screws are gonna go. Ole!
with a window, even if it's a small one. Try using a nice long curtain mounted with a high curtain rod. It will just elevate the space and you can use a nice sheer synthetic fabric that won't hold on to moisture. So these towel rods just were already here. I want to add just like a little bit of design interest. So my thought is with these, add some rope detail. I'm thinking if I just kind of wrap it around with some extra strength hot glue. I also don't love how this is like a brushed finish and then this is like really shiny, kind of almost chrome. So I have a light grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna use that to basically give the shiny parts. Just making sure that the sandpaper itself doesn't take off the metal, but. The tip with hot gluing something is really having the patience to let it fully dry. Adding that little extra something to your existing towel rods, whether it's changing the sheen of them with some sandpaper or adding some twine too, like I'm doing, it just brings in a beachy element. It's great for that rustic look, that farmhouse look, and I just think it's such an easy and super inexpensive project. I like it. It's just kind of those unexpected things that I think add the levels and the layers of design that you would see in a more elevated upscale space. I personally am obsessed with how these glass globes turned out. I just think that this elevates the design of this light. It's got the like soft minty green color that Joey used on the walls in the bedroom in a beautiful subtle way, it ties the spaces together. Existing shower rod that fits perfectly in this little opening, so we are reusing it. But this was the shower curtain that was on it before. I think a really nice tip to elevate the look of your shower curtains is to actually use real curtains. So these are the same curtains we're using over on the window. Well, same style. It's a polyester, it's sheer. It's not gonna hold on to a lot of moisture, anything like that. They're also washable if need be. So I think I'm actually gonna do another panel on this other side maybe, just to have it look kind of like a grand opening to the shower. And these curtain panels are longer than the shower curtain length, which I think also looks great if you can mount your shower curtain up higher. You're giving it that illusion of just being taller. A funky idea of how to dress up your shower is to treat it like a window and put shower curtains on both sides of the rod. tour bus. Yeah. It's about as wide as your bunk bed was. <laughs> yep. It's really cute. It is cute. Came together. I'm just really thrilled with how this looks. I think I'm very proud of how this looks too, which of course is important when you're welcoming guests to make them someplace that is nice, even though secretly it didn't cost too much. <laughs>
I'm so obsessed with how this base turned out. I love this Hilo rug from our line. I love this tip for long, narrow bathrooms. You can do a long runner that you know you would otherwise use in a hallway, and it just makes it feel so much more elegant in here. This is a washable rug. We used some leftover poles we had from the kitchen makeover. This is one of our art pieces from our artwork line. The beautiful linen-y curtains now blowing in the breeze. This cart so that people who are visiting can have a place to organize their stuff. And I love the basket trick too. Oh, it just all looks so chic, restful, beachy. And we ended up around $375 total, so under $400. Really proud of that price, budget saving. All the things I love. Hope you guys love it too. I started sitting on the toilet, so we might as well end on it. Joey's turn! Mm -hmm.